Hi everyone, let's now talk about the long run Phillips curve. It's important that you watch my previous video on the short run Phillips curve to understand this, otherwise you're not going to get it at all. Right, uh, let's take the long run idea of the Phillips curve. Again, adapted by monetarists to show that in the long term, uh, output will always return to the full employment level. That's key. Now again, you will need to watch my video on the classical AD and AS video to understand how the long run Phillips curve can be derived from the classical model. Let's start with the classical model here on the left and let's take an increase in AD. So something has increased AD in the economy. Maybe that's a sudden rise in consumption, a sudden rise in investment, a rise in net exports, whatever it might be. In the short term, in the classical model, that will increase output from YFE to Y2 and will lead to an increase in demand for inflation. Uh, we understood why in my classical ASAD video there. Right, move across to our Phillips curve. What should be shown? Well, we need to show an increase in inflation and we need to show a reduction in unemployment as output is increasing when the labour is a derived demand. And now we know from my previous video on the Phillips curve that that means a movement up the Phillips curve. So let's get these points across. Let's say that the initial equilibrium was representative of 2% inflation with unemployment at the natural rate. Let's call that 5% and that is the natural rate of unemployment. Now, with AD shifting to the right, we know that there is going to be an increase in inflation, let's say to 3%, and a reduction in unemployment, let's say to 3% also. So we move up the curve from point A to point B. However, the short run Phillips curve is limited because it doesn't say how the economy will self adjust. It doesn't say that the economy will come back to 5% unemployment, to the full employment level of output. Which is why, again, the monetarists adapted it to show that actually the economy can move back to this level. Go back to our classical model. What would happen here? Well, eventually, workers will change their wage expectations, revise them upwards and demand higher wages, which will increase costs of production for firms and shift SRAS to the left from SRAS1 to SRAS2, leading to a rise in cost push inflation and taking the economy back to YFE. On our Phillips curve diagram, we know that will shift the short run Phillips curve to the right, the opposite way to which SRS shifted. Okay? So, let's show that. Okay, so let's say uh, that the short run Phillips curve shifts to the right to now here. I'm going to call that SRPC2. If we now map our point across, we will see, as we come across, we come to point C here, which represents an increase in inflation, let's say that's now 4%, but you can see that the output level, or the unemployment level, is back at the natural rate of unemployment. And monetarists agreed, and uh, cemented this theory down with the Phillips curve, that if we connect these two points together, what we actually get is the long run Phillips curve. which tells us pretty much exactly the same as what the long-run aggregate supply curve tells us. The long-run Phillips curve tells us um, output at the natural rate of unemployment, where all factors of production are being used to their maximum amount, but at sustainable levels. So the long-run Phillips curve says that the economy will always return back to the natural rate of unemployment. You can have short-run deviations when, the, uh, when uh, we move up or down the Phillips curve, or when the Phillips curve in the short run shifts left and right, but in the long run, we will always return back to the long run Phillips curve, to the natural rate of unemployment. What the long run Phillips curve also tells us is not just the natural rate of unemployment, but also the NIRU. The rate of unemployment that will accompany, accompany a non-accelerating inflation rate. So the NIRU stands for the non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment. So the unemployment rate at which the inflation rate can be stable, non-accelerating. So whenever the economy is at the natural rate of unemployment, at this 5% value, whatever inflation rate is being achieved at that rate is stable. And that can be a long-term equilibrium for an economy. Only if there is unnecessary demand-side management or if there is a supply-side shock will inflation change. And maybe a new equilibrium is formed with a higher inflation rate at the natural rate of unemployment. But that would then be the new stable rate of inflation. Unless something changes that equilibrium, that inflation rate will be the stable rate, will be the non-accelerating rate. So the long run Phillips curve also tells us 
inflation rates that are not accelerating that accompany uh, the natural rate of unemployment. Okay, so I've done, uh, I've derived the long Phillips curve from an increase in AD in the classical model. If I show a decrease in AD in the classical model, I will also show a movement from A to C, but this time C would be down here somewhere as we move first of all down the short run Phillips curve and then we shift the Phillips curve to the left as wages rise downwards, uh, but we would still get to a vertical long run Phillips curve. Maybe you can do that on your own to understand that. But basically the long run Phillips curve is just a long run aggregate supply curve and the same conclusions can be formed as a result of this, which is that Increasing aggregate demand is not a way to increase growth in the long term, just like the classical economists would argue. We don't need increases in AD in the long term to increase growth or to reduce unemployment in the long term. What we need is supply-side policies. That's the only way in the long term to reduce this natural rate of unemployment, to see an increase in growth and a reduction in unemployment with lower rates of inflation. The only way to do that is to increase uh, long-run aggregate supply, to use supply-side policies. And on a Phillips curve, that would shift the long run Phillips curve to the left. Using supply side policies and shifting the long run Phillips curve to the left, that's the only way in which the natural rate of unemployment can fall, maybe from 5% to 4%. Um, that's the only way to grow sustainably in the long term, by using supply side policies. So you can see how the Phillips curve very much complements classical ideas and classical models. Uh, you need to bear that in mind. So when you talk about the conflict between inflation and unemployment using the short run Phillips curve, bear in mind that's only a short run idea with shifts of aggregate demand. In the long term, we see an increase in growth and therefore a reduction in unemployment and a reduction in, in the inflation rate. We need supply side policies which will shift the long run Phillips curve to the left and achieve the key macro objectives of government. I hope that makes sense now. Thanks for watching. See you all next time.